Hi, and welcome to an iOS programming tutorial special. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make an iOS 6 app look like it's an iOS 7 app. With all the hype about iOS 7, there is a fundamental issue. An app you design for iOS 7 isn't going to look very good on iOS 6, and there's no guarantee that a lot of people will upgrade to iOS 7. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to make this web view application that we created in another tutorial look more like an iOS 7 app with transparent toolbars and white toolbars and a much cleaner flat look. Don't worry about following along with this, it's more just for the skills that you'll pick up that you can then implement in your own project. So I'm just going to open up Xcode and find the web view project and open that up again. Here we're going to go into our storyboard and that's where pretty much all the work that I'm going to be showing you how to do today will be done. Let's begin with the toolbars. If you've ever seen iOS 7, you'll notice that the toolbars are white, almost always. And they've got a transparent look, so the content behind the toolbars is what affects its colour. So let's start by changing the toolbars colour. Click on the bottom toolbar, and then for tint, I'm going to set that to be white. You can just select white colour by clicking on this arrow. You'll notice it goes white, but you can't really see the buttons anymore. Let's give them a black look. So, click on them, and you might need to click twice so to make sure the actual button is selected. And under Tint, select a black colour, or dark text colour. Do the same for the other button. You'll notice it is starting to look a lot nicer, and if you run the application now, it'll look a lot flatter and it'll look a lot more clean and streamlined. As you can see, it does, and there's this nice shadow, and it really does look a bit like an iOS 7 application. Let's do the same to the top toolbar. Set the colour to be white, and now you've got another problem, which is the Go button. Don't worry about that. We're actually going to delete the Go button, and I'm going to show you how to add a button that doesn't have a border. You could, of course, go into border and change the style, but that actually won't make a big difference to the style. So just delete the go button by clicking on it and then pressing the delete key on your keyboard. Now we can adjust this URL text field. Let's actually go into the bar button item in our hierarchy view, click on the arrow and select the actual text field. Let's fiddle around with the various border styles. Let's try the cleanest, simplest one first and see what that looks like. Okay, so that looks okay, but there's a few issues with borders and limits and everything. If we run the application now, let's see what it actually looks like in practice and whether it's just the XRB that's, or the storyboard that's playing up. As you can see, it is. The actual toolbar still has this clean look and it's just that the storyboard's having a few issues uh, displaying this in a preview. This may happen, so always run your application if you think something looks a bit weird. Obviously, it's not so logical for that the app will just suddenly overlay text that you haven't created and do other weird things, so do run the applications in the simulator. So if I click on the enter URL here text, I can start typing, and it's a much more streamlined area. There's no borders and no reflections or different colours and things that users have to worry about. Let's now add in a go button. To do this, we're going to begin by dragging in a button. I'm just going to put it on top of the web view for now so we can start editing it. Once it's in the toolbar, we won't be able to edit it. Let's go into the type under the button's properties and make it a custom button. That instantly gets rid of the border. Now let's try and keep a bit of that green colour theme that we were sticking with originally. So select our recently used colour, the green colour. Of course you might have a black or another colour. I'll show you how to do black as well by just going text colour, black. I'll be showing you black in this tutorial even though our web views theme was a green colour because it's probably more likely that you're using a black theme in your application. It also gets rid of more of the gradient and makes it less visible, so it's a good colour to use. Let's change the text of the button to be Go, like it was before, and make it slightly smaller so that it fits in that gap between the text field and the edge of the screen. You'll notice the good thing about the fact that the storyboard is stuffing up a bit is that you can see where the edge of the storyboard, uh, where the edge of the text field rather is. Let's drag in the Go button, and you'll notice once you put it over the top of the toolbar it will create a blue line, a vertical line, with two circles on top and below so that you can see where it's going to be placed on the toolbar. So you just drop it there and you'll see it will have been placed there. Once it's here, it's harder to edit. What you'll need to do is under bar button item, like we do with text field, click the arrow 
and then click on the actual button. Here we can change it a bit more. Let's change the font to a nicer looking font that looks a bit more iOS 70 again. So underneath font, click the little T button, select the font to be custom font, and then select for family is the actual name of the font. I'm going to do HTTC. Again, you'll notice that there's a bit of an issue with it, but don't worry about that. Leave the style as medium rather than a light style so that it's obvious to the user that it's a button. Apple makes a big deal of this with iOS 7 is defining the buttons and making them uh, individual from text. So if you've got a label, it probably doesn't have a bold font, but then you should have a button that does have a bold font and keep that consistent throughout your project. Let's run the application again and see what it looks like now and make sure that the button isn't creating a shadow in the application. Good. You can see that it doesn't. So I can click on the button, but you'll notice as soon as I click on it, it hides. And then I, when I let go, it appears again. So let's fix that up. Click on your button again. And then under the properties, for the state config, click on the default and change it to highlighted. Then change the highlighted title to go exclamation mark and the text color to black. All this is doing is saying that when the button is highlighted, which means it's being clicked on at that very moment, before what was happening was there was no text and any text that there was going to be was going to be white. But what we had when the button was not pressed was black text that said go exclamation mark. So we're just putting that back in so that the user doesn't have any problems with that effect. So run the application once again. Now what will happen is when the user presses go, nothing will happen to the button. It's not particularly clear that it's actually doing anything or that it's a button. So let's fix that up. Click on the button go again, make sure the state is still under highlighted, and we'll make it a dark grey colour instead. Let's also make sure we remember to hook up the button, because it will no longer be hooked up to the action because we deleted it at first. So right click on the view controller or control click depending on your Mac settings, and then underneath received actions find the visit web page action we created or any actions that you've created for your application and drag it over the go button. Let's make it touch down. Oh, we can make it touch up inside. Let's make it touch up inside. Touch down will mean that when, as soon as the button is clicked, the action activates. So as soon as the user even touches the button, it's going to load up the URL that we've entered. We don't want that. We want them to have to tap on the button and then let go. Then they can see that cool effect we added with a dark grey colour when they click on the go button. Let's see if that works. So let me zoom in so you can see it. And as you can see, when I click on the button, it goes a dark grey. As soon as I let go, it goes back to black. So let's enter a URL and make sure it's still all working. So enter a URL and you'll notice that the text in the text field also looks nicer and more streamlined. We didn't actually have to do anything with the text. It was just the, the fact that we made the text look, uh, the text box, we got rid of the border. So there was no reflections or anything destructing the view of the text. So it's looking pretty iOS 70 with a lot of cool effects and a nice streamlined effect. You'll notice there's a few issues though. Let me begin with the obvious one. The fact that the go button is a bit too high up uh, compared to the URL. Let's see if we can fix that. There's not necessarily going to be a fix. Start by going into your button dash go under bar button item and go into your alignment area. Let's make it a bit lower down. We can put do it like that or we could use this one on the very right hand side with an arrow pointing up and down. That should center it. As you can see, it sort of does, but still not quite. Let's put it down lower and see what that looks like. You'll notice that that original bold text is still in the background, so you're going to have to just ignore that. That may be a nuance on my computer or it may be occurring for you. So we can try a few different settings for where the button should be located until you find one that you're fairly happy with. We can change the view scale to fill as well, and that might affect where it's positioned on the screen. There's a few other properties you can change under view and control. We could change the stretching as well, so let's see what happens if we stretch it a bit higher on the Y value by clicking the up arrow next to it. As you can see, it doesn't do anything in practice anyway. Let's try making it 1 and then run the application and see if anything happens. As you can see, nothing does happen. Let's return it to 0. It's a good practice even if you don't notice anything noticeable when you change a property change it back to what it was originally, in case later on it affects you and you can't find the issue. Let's leave it as it is now and we can come back to that later if we wanted to. Another thing we could try is an edge content and inset. 
That could work, and we could try adding an inset at the top. Let's do that. Until it's back over that bold original button, so you can barely see that there's two buttons there in the storyboard. Run the application again, and it should be centered. If it's not, just keep adjusting that uh, height value. And so let's do that one or two more times, because it's still a bit off. So again, underneath our button properties, underneath our edge and inset tab, make the top inset a bit higher. This will just push a few pixels down from the top, pretty much putting a spacer. If your button was too close to the bottom of the toolbar, you'd make the bottom value higher and the top value lower. Okay, that'll look good. So let's leave that, and we won't try running it again. It should be fine. Let's do one more thing now. You'll notice in our application that although the toolbars do have that white look and they do look very iOS 70, there's no alpha value. It's not transparent. So there's a few workarounds for this. The first is to write a lot of code that will become very messy and you'd have to do it for every toolbar. So we won't do that. Instead, we'll just adjust the alpha value of the toolbar. It will mean that the buttons may appear a bit faded, so we might need to make them a slightly darker color to contrast this. Let's see what it looks like. Let's begin by adjusting the alpha value of the toolbar, and then we'll drag the web view up so it goes behind the toolbar. So click on that top toolbar or the bottom one, whichever you want to make transparent. You could do it to both if you wanted. And then underneath the view alpha value, it will be set to 1. The alpha value is in a value between 0 and 1 that pretty much says how transparent it is, 1 being not at all transparent and 0 being very transparent. Let's set this to 0 0.8. You'll notice it will have just gone a bit faded. So click on your text field and change the color by clicking on the color next to the name of the color and then going into your circular color mixer and just bringing the value down a bit so it's a slightly darker color. Then let's click on the toolbar and drag it down so sort of in the middle of the web view. Then drag the web view up to the top of the page and then drag the toolbar back up again. Now, let's run our application once again. Click stop and run the application. Once Google loads, you'll notice that you can see the, uh, the web view behind the toolbar. It's a bit too strong, so let's make it slightly. So, again, we'll click on our toolbar. And then we'll change the alpha value to maybe 0 0.9. That should work well. But we've done something terribly wrong. We've made the top toolbar the alpha one. And that's a problem. So let's put the web view back underneath that toolbar and set that toolbar back to a 1 for its alpha value. The reason that's a problem is because the web view, the top of the web view, will be cut out. If we did it for the bottom web view, the user will just have to scroll a bit. So let's change that. Click on the bottom toolbar and then make the alpha 0 0.9. Now run the application once again and let's load up a web page and see what it looks like. So as you can see, there's a slight color change as we scroll through the toolbar with the web page. Let's enter a slightly more dynamically colored website. So I'll just go into the 99 cents website. Okay, press go. And what will happen is you should be able to see a slightly more transparent color to the background. Let's drag the green part down and let's zoom in a bit so we can see if there actually is anything changing. Okay, you can faintly see a green, but it's not quite strong enough. Let's click on this toolbar again and make it a slightly more transparent look. You'll notice that no matter how much we make it more transparent, there's not really going to be any color change. We need to make the web view lower, remember? So click on the web view and that bottom middle square, let's drag that down to the very bottom of the screen until you see some dotted blue lines along the bottom of the screen, indicating it is touching the bottom of the screen. Run the application again, and now you should see a real change. So let's go back to the website and see if there's anything noticeable. Click go. And now you can. As I scroll down, you can see that there's a transparent background to the website. It looks really good, and it does look a bit iOS 70. Obviously, there's one thing that you might want to change, which is these buttons. So let me explain to you a bit about that in a moment. Firstly though, let's change the text field. So, now let's fix up this clear button problem. It does look really out of place in an iOS 7 themed application, mainly due to the fact that iOS doesn't really have these bigger clear buttons. So, 
We'll do fix this up by just removing the clear button or making it visible at all times. We'll see what works best. So, back in Xcode, click on your text field in the hierarchy view to make sure your actual text field is selected. And under text field, under clear button, get rid of appears while editing and select never appears. Make sure clear when editing begins is selected. Run the application now and what you'll notice is, if I enter a URL, so let me do that quickly. I'll just do Google again. And press go. The clear button did not appear. So that's a bit annoying then you'd be thinking when you go back into the URL bar and want to enter a new URL. Well no, because when I go back into the URL bar, it automatically clears because we selected clear when editing begins. So that fixes that problem up. The one other thing you probably want to do is make these back and forward buttons not look so Iowa 60. They still have a gradient look and they've got a border around them. So there's a couple of workarounds for this. Let's try the first and most obvious one. Let's just import an image of a back button and an image of a forward button. So go add files and I'm just going to find some icons under downloads oh, and then underneath, oh, sorry, under desktop and I can find a back button. The other option is, is to create our own back button from text. That's probably easier seeing that you may not have rights to images, you may not be able to get a designer to design images, or you may not yourself be able to design an image. So, we're going to delete both these buttons we've created. Click on each and press delete. Keep that space though, because we'll need it later on, so we may as well leave it there. Then drag in an ordinary button, and I'm just going to place it in the middle of the screen so I can fiddle around with it a bit. Let's begin by under type, selecting a custom button to get rid of the border, obviously. And then we'll change the text color to a black color once again. Or you can change it to a dark text color. I'm going to select a black color because our toolbar is transparent, so we really want it to stand out and not look transparent. After all, the buttons in iOS 7 still aren't too transparent. Again, I'm going to change the font to HTTC, a font that looks a lot like an iOS 7 sort of font, and keep it as medium so we've got that consistent look throughout the application. Now, the, for the text of the button, I'm going to do a back arrow. That's just a square bra uh, triangular bracket, sorry, and you can do that by pressing shift and then the comma key on a Mac. That creates a button that does look quite a lot like a back button. We might want to make it a bit bigger, obviously, so next to this T button, there's two arrows. Click on the up arrow a few times until it's of an adequate size. Remember, it needs to fit inside the toolbar, so you don't want the button to be too big. The other option we have is to insert a special character, like an emoji icon. To do this, double click on the existing text, then go into Edit in the Xcode menu at the top of your screen. You can't see that on my screen, but you'll see there's an Apple logo, Xcode file, Edit, View, Navigate, and so on. Select Edit, and then select Special Characters. You can also use Alt Command T as a keyboard shortcut to access this. You can then find a back button, so you can look for back, but you're unlikely to find anything there. We could do arrows and hands and all of that, but that doesn't really look any better than what it would uh, if we just used ordinary buttons. But it is a creative way to use emoji icons in your application, so do consider it. Let's just look for arrows. So here I've got some arrows open just by clicking on arrows, and I can scroll through until I find one that I like. It's a good way to find icons that are free and uncopyrighted. The one thing to note is that sometimes fonts and different sizes don't work so well with arrows, so there can be a few issues along the way. If you click on arrows, you can see the variations of that particular arrow as you change different fonts. If I selected this font, Menlo Bold, I would have this looking icon. But if I selected Zap Dingbat, I would have this sort of icon for the same icon. Again, I could use a bullet or a star or a pictograph, which is another good option. I'm just going to stick with the uh, carrot arrows or triangular brackets or whatever you want to call them. Let's make it the actual button a bit smaller so it only takes up the necessary room. And you want to make sure when you drag the height up and down in this little black box with the size appears that the height remains under 40 so it fits well onto our toolbar. So let's make mine 37. Then get the arrow and I'm going to copy it by command C by clicking on it and then going command C and then command V to paste. And then on the other one I'm just going to change the text to be the opposite arrow for forward. Drag that one 
uh, just uh, to the right of the toolbar, where that blue arrow appears again. And we can make it a bit smaller so that it doesn't <clears throat> take up as much room on the toolbar. But make sure it's obviously still visible. You'll notice that didn't work so well and there's still a gap. So to get rid of that, let's go Command Z and put it back into the middle of our page. Uh, you'll notice it's appeared at the top of the screen, so just drag it back down. And I went Command Z too many times. Here we go. And then let's make it a bit thinner so that there's no gap. Make it as thin as you can without the image or the uh, or the font or the text disappearing. That's better there. I'll also make it a bit shorter, like just in case we run into any issues there. The other thing I'm going to do is delete that initial one that we created and then copy this one since we made all those changes and we want them to be consistent. And then make that a back arrow. Consistency and symmetry is very important to Apple and if you try to submit your application to the App Store, you may get it rejected if your application does not look good and consistent. So now let's go back to this and drag that button onto the left hand side of the web view. Then for the other button, drag that to the right hand side. Now we've got two good looking buttons that don't have any borders and or any gradients. Again, let's click on our view controller or right click and hook up the back and forward button actions. I'm going to do touch down for these. That will eliminate the need to add any highlight text and it also makes more sense as back and forward buttons in iOS 7 that look like this probably wouldn't actually have a touch down inside. They'd probably just have touch down. So now if I enter an address and then press go, you'll see what happens when I use the back buttons. So let's wait for it to load up. And you'll notice initially that the back buttons look really good and they do stand out a bit. They don't actually give you a particularly transparent look about them. They still work and they work well. Uh, you'll notice that that is still is a bit of a, pro uh, a problem, the highlight colours, but it's not too much of a problem and you'll remember how to fix that from when we fixed it up with Go and made it just go to a slightly lighter grey colour. The other thing you may have noticed is they're still not quite centred on the toolbar. Remember how we can fix this. Let's click on them both at the same time so we can do it exactly at the same time by clicking on the first one and then clicking on the second one by holding down command when you click on it. Then you'll notice that we've accidentally clicked on the bar button items. So click on the arrows next to the bar button items. And also, still holding down command, click on each button. But deselect by clicking on it again, the bar button item. Then let's make the inset on the top about two more, or three. Or maybe one more even. Okay, I'm going to make it seven as it turns out. That looks about right. So you just click stop and run the application again. So now it looks really centered and really good. So we've created what was a fairly ugly green uh, gradient looking application that really looked like iOS 6 or even before iOS 6 and we've made it look like a real iOS 7 application. Looks really clean and really nice and I hope that you think that too. Hopefully you've learned something from this video and you found it to be helpful in your own projects. If you've got any questions about customizing other objects such as segmented controls or maybe a table view, comment on this video or message us directly or message us through Facebook or our website 99centsappdevelopment.com. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, be sure to like and subscribe.